Okay, let's move on to Article 4, which is about imaging suspected renal colic. So you've got that patient, you think they have a kidney stone, which one do I pick? Do I picture the CT? Do I go for the ultrasound? We're kind of addressing that issue. Right. This is uh, an ASEP kind of based paper, and basically they give the intro, there are two million visits for renal colic every year. It's very common. The vast majority of the time we choose <laughs> CT to make the diagnosis. Of That's course, amazing, that number. 90%. 90%. I'm not shocked by it, but I'm not then either, you kind of are when you step like, back and wow. look at it. That's a um, lot. You know, we talk about this fantasy world of these reduced dose radiation CTs that is in the literature, but no one actually does it. Yeah, um, very rarely why. done. I don't they know why just do either. It automatically. I know. I don't, I, we're not default. radiologists, but if I were oh. one, I would. Yeah. Um, and really, we haven't done any better in terms of patient outcomes, how many people get admitted, how many people end up needing an intervention. In the last 20 years, we haven't made any strides but in this certainly particular. But we irradiated a lot <laughs> of people. We really irradiated <laughs> a lot of people, yeah. It hasn't, hasn't made any difference, no. yeah. Um, so, you know, when you look at studies, they suggest that doing an ultrasound at the, at the beginning of the workup is a good idea. It reduces radiation exposure. Again, outcomes aren't really affected mm -hmm. by this. And whether that's a yeah. point of care, emergency physician performed ultrasound or a radiology performed Which ultrasound. Which is kind of cool, right? You know, like, why aren't we doing more of that? And yeah. the fact is, we don't really do it that often. Ultrasound mm -hmm. is, when you look at studies of groups of people and look at what kind of imaging they got, ultrasound is only used 7% of the time. Which is, I, considering the fact that there's like this almost rabid passion for ultrasound, yeah. I'm just surprised it's not more common. It's probably very center-based, depending on people's how, you know, their, their access to ultrasound, their yeah. proficiency themselves in doing it. It's probably, and their urologists, their right. consultants and what they push for. Because I do what think at academic centers, yeah. these residency program kind of centers, we do it a lot. Oh, we do it a lot. Um, but I see out in the community, it's yeah. not so much. Yeah. So some of the background, you know, this is a self-limited disease. Do kidney stones kill you? No. Do they actually go away? Most of the time, yes. So, you know, why even image them at all if you know that the crystal ball of, take, you know, uh, odds are that this will resolve itself. But it turns out that it can guide sub subsequent therapy. There are stones that are large that yeah. we need to kind of know about earlier rather than later. And what if it's not a kidney stone? What if it's something else? And so imaging is often to prove that it's a kidney stone and not the AAA, yeah. for example. Um, so that's often why we image as well. There's actually not a lot of guidelines to tell us what the appropriate use is in terms of imaging choices. We've read lots of papers, right. we've talked about this a lot, but there's not really a lot of guidelines. So what they did is they got together a group of experts. There were emergency physicians, urologists, and radiologists, three from each in so the group. group of nine. Group of nine. Uh, and they tried to get a literature-based consensus on which imaging they would choose. And so how they chose to do this was they developed these 29 little clinical vignettes, changing the age of the patient, changing the gender of the patient, changing the presentation, changing the scenario to try to, and then they would say, okay, would each one of you, what would you choose? And then they give you this table in the paper that tells you of the nine, five picked this, all nine picked that, whatever. Now they don't tell you of the five that picked this, if it was the who urologist and <laughs> radiologist, <laughs> they, or, they, they, they don't tell you who it was. They infer in one of them, they yes. infer, but that's about it. Right. Um, so there's all these different scenarios and we're not going to go through all of the scenarios here. We'll kind of take, what are the take homes from the scenarios? And really the focus was like, when can I not do a CT? I mean, obviously that's kind of what you're trying to get to. Right. And they did try to base this on literature. And when you read the paper, they do say you know, there are five papers that said this and three papers. That, so they do yeah. try to base it in literature. Yeah. What are the options that they had to choose from? They could do point of care ultrasound check. I would like a radiology performed ultrasound. I would like a standard CT or I'd be okay with that. I'd be okay with the reduced radiation dose CT. If I had that in my institution, that'd be fine. Um, and CT was considered the kind of gold standard to diagnose kidney stones and the ultrasound really what they're looking at because ultrasound can't see all the stones. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. the same as, as CT. We know that, but you're looking for hydro, right? You're looking for hydronephrosis to see if there's a, a, a backup, you know, uh, if there's an obstruction. Yeah. yeah. Um, rather than actually trying to find the stone. That's not the point of the ultrasound. The ultrasound, the point of it is try to find the obstruction. So in terms of the results, well, radiology performed ultrasound. There are 43 relevant articles out there. What, did, what kind of sensitivity does it have? Well, the sensitivity is all over the place. Does, you couldn't get it. From 3% to 98%. It's only missing a 5% in that whole range there. So yeah. that's, yeah. Well, anytime we cover papers on ultrasound, we oh, always yeah. talk about this because right. it's operator dependent. Yep. I mean, there's lots of factors that's be the body's. And I think it's fascinating. This is radiology performed I know. ultrasound. That's right. And it's, it's that bad it's sometimes. Right. It's true. Wow, it's they true. need to get rid of that.
tech. Whoever and the, that tech was. the range, depending on the paper, was wh how they defined the outcome of the ultrasound. Was it the uh, hydronephrosis, uh, which is an indirect measure of obstructing stone, or did they actually have to find the stone? That would affect the number and the sensitivity if they if, if that was the criteria. Right, and that is and that for. is so uh, some of the lower right. ones. Exactly, that, you, you had to find the stone to say it was there, and that that makes some sense because you don't see yeah. stones that often. This modality of looking with the ultrasound and trying to find hydronephrosis and obstructing stones is unlikely to miss stones that need an intervention because you're finding the obstruction, which is really what the right. intervention is for. So therefore, it really is identifying those patients that you would want to do an intervention. So if you send them to radio radiology suite to get their ultrasound, yeah. they're going to pick up on an obstructing stone. Yeah. What about point of care ultrasound? 15 different articles out there. Reported sensitivity and specificity, 70 to 75. We're better. We're better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let's just, no, we'll just again, stop right there now. Yeah, it's it, just how you define what the success exactly, is, you know? Exactly. What is it that you were looking for? <laughs> and then your percentage goes along with that. So, you know, again, the diagnostic accuracy is based on the hydronephrosis because as we developed our skill in doing this, we knew what we were looking for. We're yeah. looking for the hydro. We're not looking for individual stones. So our criteria are a little bit different. So we look better, but yeah. we probably weren't. Yeah, <laughs> hydronephrosis, if, it's, if it was moderate or greater, if it's really bad, then our specificity gets even better, of course. Now, standard CT is the reference standard. It is greater because it can pick up alternative diagnoses as well. They found 36 papers. The presence of, alt what else did they find besides kidney stones ranges everywhere from 0% to 33, a third of the time they found something else. But what is an alternative finding yeah. depends on the paper and how they defined it. And so they actually tried to, to develop a consensus of what that is. And they tried to define it as something that was acute and clinically important. And if you really kind of narrow it down to that, then the prevalence of that is probably about 5%, much lower incidence of those things. So that's an interesting though. That's, that's an interesting. Like a, oh. that one in 20, you'd One find something 20. else. Wow, yeah. okay. Um, but we know that increasing CT use does not yield more findings. That was something that the papers sort yeah. of yield. This idea of radiation, uh, re reduced radiation dose CT, or ALARA, as low as reasonably achievable, everybody agreed that that would be better. If we could have that, we would, uh, we would love that. But we know that less than 10% of the time yeah. are they actually doing that. Why exactly? We're, it's beyond our know. scope to actually know why. <laughs> yes. But you should ask the radiologists in that group. Yeah, but if you look at the papers that look at those types of scans, the sensitivity and specificity are in the 90s, so very good. And again, and if we're looking for stones that are large, that require an intervention, which is really what we want to know about, it's very sensitive for those. So they apply the results to these 29 different vignettes. So first they get the, the experts together. They all define, they agree on what the definitions of these things are. And do we all agree that it does this, does that? Yes. Okay, now let's go through the 29 vignettes and let's check off what we would find acceptable. In 15 of the 29, almost half the time, they perfectly agreed. All nine of them, the radiologist, the ultrasound, uh, the old urologist, the emergency physician, they all agreed which is pretty good. That is pretty good. And even if you look across all the 29, there was at least moderate consensus in all of the 29. And again, the scenarios all varied by age, by the w whether they had a history of kidney stones, which of mm -hmm. course figures into it, their comorbidities, whether what they, they came in with. with. Meds. Yes, yeah. exactly, all of those things. So let's look at some typical scenarios. We've got a young male, he's very handsome, He's yeah. got a blue sweater very on. Very happy. Yes, very mm -hmm. happy. Doesn't look like a kidney stone patient. No, to me. he looks quite. That's because quite his comfortable. Pain is better. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, now he's got a history of stones, and he's had these symptoms before, and his pain relief is good. And I think that part is interesting. Yeah. You know, the pain relief part of it, as part of the equation, is interesting because often you're making your decision about imaging before you know you have pain relief. You know, you it's you're what, cl clicking what, the box. You're clicking the box as you're getting started because you have throughput times, things like mm -hmm. that. But I think what this tells us is that you know, judging maybe maybe. maybe the more prudent approach is to actually give the pain relief weight and see what happens because that may figure in probably should yeah, figure that's in important to your decision we to do, image. We, you, you click the pain med and you click the CT scan. Exactly. It's like boom, boom, on, yes. next yeah. person. And yeah. maybe it should be pain med and hold. Mm -hmm. Right, especially given remember that this is a self-limited disease. Right. Your risk of missing something time sensitive is not that great. So maybe we should slow down a little bit. And in this particular patient probably the best approach, he's young, so radiation matters. He has a history of it, so the likelihood of these things is you know, on the side of it's probably a stone. So going for the point of care ultrasound without pursuing additional imaging is probably the way to go. Whether you see hydro on that point of care ultrasound or you don't, that is the imaging Which of is choice. interesting, right? Yes. I, it makes it almost makes you wonder why you even did POCUS in the first place, but because right. but, you're not <laughs> right. going to change what you do, but yeah. you'll just document that the they, hydro. Yeah. yeah, that they had an obstruct, yeah, and that probably maybe that figures into their referral pattern mm -hmm. because if you did see hydro, maybe you'd be a little more aggressive about making sure they have follow-up. Yeah. Um, if you had that same patient, a young male who didn't tell you that they have a history of stones, still the point of care ultrasound was the consensus that that's what you should do. 
So a young male, we're talking male, the gender yeah. matters here, um, history of stones or even no history of stones, point of care ultrasound is the way to go. Now, what if we have a young male, not as clear that it's renal colic on their story and they have a history of stones. Yeah. So it's, uh, then okay. it's like, eh, well, maybe ultrasound versus CT. They're a little more split here. And it suggested that basically if the story is not as good for stones, that CT might be the way to go because maybe it's an appy. Maybe right. it's something else. So CT probably a little bit more favored there. If you did start with ultrasound first and it showed hydro, then they said maybe you could go with the reduced radiation CT. They're, anyway, they're pretty, pretty split here. Yeah. But I think CT was kind of the consensus yeah. here. Yeah. Now, it gets a little more obvious as we go on here. So we've got an older patient. He's 75 years old. Doesn't matter what the story nope, is. Sorry. Everyone says CT. <laughs> and probably because the radiation doesn't matter here. You know, the radiation doesn't matter. It's going to be better. The alternative diagnoses rise on the list, especially yeah. some serious ones. And so CT. Now, of course, if I could have my magical reduced radiation dose, sure, I'd like that. <laughs> That'd be nice. We'll go for that. What about a 55-year-old, no history of stone? Guy. It's a male. Yeah. Everyone still goes for CT. If I have low dose, great, but CT. Yeah. What if it's a very classic presentation? He tells me I have a history of a stone. Everyone said, you're done with it. You're done with it. And, and you know, point of care ultrasound, sure, have at it. Yeah, but so you really don't so need imaging. this is one where they didn't all agree. Yeah, right. And uh, um, they do mention in the paper that the person who wasn't so comfortable with this was the emergency folks. <laughs> yeah. So I think this is one that's a little squishy. And, yeah. I, and I think when you're at the bedside, it's yeah. a whole different I think game. that's right, yeah. Now, what about female patients? What about women? Well, you know, as much as we can do ultrasound, the better, right? L less radiation to breasts and sensitive tissues, Hearts. the better. So um, whether it's point of care ultrasound or radiation-based ultrasound, they're good because also in the differential in these patients often are, is pelvic pathology that's not present in the males. So the ultrasound offers some advantages there. If you cannot relieve the pain, you find yourself in that category, then going for a CT scan yeah. is uh, preferred there. Pediatric patients, obviously, we want to uh, avoid the radiation, so ultrasound is clearly the choice. But if you have, again, you know, we're not really thinking about kidney stones in pediatric patients, but, you know, in general, if that, that's right. really what you're kind of stuck on, you think that's what it is, regardless of what you think it is, you're going to get a CT if you can't right. control the pain. And while not common, it's more common than you think. Yeah. So if you have a seven-year-old who comes in with colicky pain that, gosh, if he were 50, I'd worry about a kidney stone. Yeah. Sure sounds like a kidney, or gallstones even. Kids are getting stones. Yeah. Um, so it's not something to, it, it, it does happen. It's it does not happen. common, but but if it's sure, if it sounds like a kidney stone, think about it. And alternative diagnoses are important here as as well. So yeah. CT would be where you go if you can't control the pain and get things looking better. Of course, reduced radiation would be lovely. What about a patient who comes in with a renal stent? Yeah. They tell you, I have a stent in four stones and now I have colic. Well, an ultrasound would be nice there because looking for obstruction, they shouldn't mm -hmm. have an obstruction, that's why they have the stent in, would be really helpful because now that looks like the stent's not functioning. What if they've had lithotripsy? Ultrasound would be fine, preferably in the radiology suite, like a radiology yeah. ordered ultrasound because they can see things like hematoma and get some more detail that we don't get on our point of care ultrasound. If patients are discharged without a CT scan, they should be told that, hey, you still might need one if you're still having pain and the stone isn't passing. This may be where we end up going mm -hmm. as an, you know, either as an outpatient or you returning to the, CT, uh, to, the, to the ER. This may be ultimately what we have to get. So the summary of this is patients who are, you know, younger, uh, on the younger patients, side, yeah. yeah, male patients that are on the younger side and their pain is controlled. Let's try not to do CTs in this patient. They may not even need any imaging at all, but certainly ultrasound would be fine. Patients who are more in the older range, the CT is where we're going. Mm -hmm. um, especially if they don't have a history of stone, that's for sure. And if they're over 75, you're getting a CT for sure. And no one would disagree with that. Pregnant patient with typical kidney stone pain, renal colic, ultrasound is the way to go. We really want to avoid CTs at all possible, especially if the symptoms are relieved. In a pediatric patient, let's start with ultrasound. If we can't get the symptoms under control, we see, may end up doing a CT and reduce dose CT. Everyone agrees it'd be lovely, right. but you know, let's right. just, that's sort of in an ideal world, but that'd be lovely. Right. So if you have the article in front of you while you're taking the exam and there's a specific clinical scenario, odds are they they are matching the same scenario in those 29. We didn't list all 29 here yeah. for you. So if you really have any sort of, oh, gosh, that's, that's a little, I'm not sure about that one. Just yeah. go to the article and see. They're probably going to pick things that were, there, I, I there, was, there was, yeah, that there was consensus. Yeah. I think so they're they'll not pick, pick this, things, sort of, yeah. this sort of general thing. Yeah, I think that's right.